Welcome back everybody, today we're going to continue our multi-clipper instance configuration on our mini PC and hook up this little 5 inch LCD I got for a sweet deal on eBay. Let's get to it. Alright, so first off, uh, last time, if you check out the other video, I'll put a link at the end of this video and in the description. This is our little mini PC we picked up for 100 bucks. Uh, it is a dual core Celeron, I do not remember how much RAM it has. Uh, I did add, I left the regular Windows install intact, added this SSD, I believe it's a 128 or 256, and I'm having it boot straight into Ubuntu with the multi-instance install clipper, which we use Kia for. And you can check out the video on how we did that. It has been working perfect. I have it set up for four printers. I have been using it with three, just and I had time to really uh, port the last one from Marlin over to Clipper for it. Just lazy and haven't needed that printer. Uh, first off, this is the LCD. If I see if I can get this in shot without a ton of glare. Uh, it is an 800 by 480, 16 by 9, although when you go into its configuration menu built in, it says 16 by 10, but I don't see any uh, bars anywhere on the top or bottom, so it does appear to be 16.9. Uh, Multi touch capacitive screen. Uh, I actually picked up two of these, one for $20 and one for $25, with like two bucks shipping. Uh, got here quick. I just looked recently, and they have gone up on eBay, ranging from $30 to $50. So it appears you, you just got to look back, and uh, whenever a full container of them come in, uh, grab one. Uh, I did have some problems, but we'll go over the problems that I had so you don't have to. It took me about two weeks to get this set up. Uh, see if I can make this not look straight up my nose, Ugh, especially with my sinuses, as bad as they are at the moment. Go and try and get through this video without sneezing my brains out. Uh, like I said, I had some issues, but I have figured that out, and we will cover that. Uh, we'll set this to the side real quick. I'll show you woo, what came in the box, mostly, because I got ahead of myself. Just says portable monitor. Uh, the two that I got came under different uh, brand names, but they are exactly the same. Uh, screen, IPS... Nothing on this side. Looks like a little spot for a QR code or something. Here. Standard certifications. Made in China, obviously. Portable monitor. Uh, it says it's black. It is an IPS. Full viewing angle. It is LED backlight. It supports a Raspberry Pi, laptop, PCs, Mac, Xbox One, PS4, Windows 7, 8, 10. But not 11, apparently. That's not true. I've hooked it up with a... Uh, Laptop running 11 work fine. Security system monitor, industrial equipment, car reversing camera, smart home equipment, etc. Let's get into the box. Just enough of that uh, vacuum pressure to make you feel like you got something special, like Apple invested a ton of money into. I had this on top. As I can say, I've already got in here. Uh, first off, this screen comes without the legs on it, just straight down in here. This little section will be a bag that actually has what's left of it. So I have these two legs. Comes with a little screwdriver. And an assortment of different size screws. Screws to fit these two legs. I believe there's four total. Yeah. Uh, no, six total. More than enough. I guess so when you mount this somewhere, you could use the top and bottom holes and still have some spares. Uh, then it also came for screws for these standoffs on the back. And I'll switch to the other camera in a second and show you all the ports. It came with... A power supply, which has a red plug. I'm not sure what that means. And it is... Lord, I cannot read the voltage or the amperage. There we go. 5 volts, 3 amps. So, nice little power supply. It's nice to have. And under this section is a manual, which is slightly correct. The exact same that came with the other one, although this one had some banding issues in the printing. Uh, I'll give you a rundown without going through all of this because uh, we can see it on the monitor and it'll be a better view. And then just on the back is a little bit of a diagram of ways you can connect this. Uh, it says it is 5 inch, 800 by 480, panel type is TN, uh, highlight LED backlight, average brightness is 300 CD divided by M2, contrast is 700 to 1, interface type Power, power plus touch, external HDMI, built-in HDMI, and I will explain that. 
a machine size. 48 by 41.7 times 3 1 inch. Yeah, who knows what that is. Uh, also, on the photos used on the eBay listing, uh, it had two different sizes. It had kind of a CAD drawing uh, with diameter or, uh, dimension lines on it, uh, but the same lines that went to the same points, like the screw holes, had two different sizes. Obviously, we're not between inches and millimeters. I, I don't know. I had to take calipers and measure this thing myself for another project I'm working on. Uh, package weight, 0.36 pounds. Net weight, 1.49 pounds. Let's get confusing. And you really don't need this for anything. Down here in the bottom, ton of stuff. Ton of stuff. Uh, the first one, I just got one package, which was just the box. The second one, I actually had two shipments, this box and one of these. Uh, it was actually this one, which was an additional USB-A to C cable. I I'm not quite sure why they shipped this, because uh, there is no USB-A on this unit, and there is no USB-C. So, I I'm, I'm not quite sure what this is for. Uh, but it's a nice cable to have. I don't know if it is power and data, or just power. Don't know. I haven't tried it. But that came in a, shepherd a separate shipment. Uh, and now inside the box, both of them of the two that I bought came with pretty much all the same that was inside. We get a little stylus pen, which you do not need because this is capacitive. And I am about to sneeze. Sorry about that. I'm going to try and mute that as much as possible and not put a snotty rag in camera for the entire time. That was only one. I'm a double sneezer, so there should be a second. And hopefully it's not running down my chest. Whew. All right, back to what we have in the box. We have a USB-A to micro USB, very short cable. We have an HDMI printed circuit board cable. Actually, this is the mini HDMI. Yeah, mini HDMI cable. And it just says extra accessory you may need to use. Did not need that one. Uh, we have a little uh, JST connector to two uh, positive leads and a negative. Uh, this is for drawing power directly from a Raspberry Pi or some other source or backfading power if you wanted to. Uh, then you also have this cable, which is a uh, full-size HDMI to the printed circuit board cable. And uh, this is the one I used on my other one. Uh, the other one of these I have installed in an Ender 3 Pro uh, with a Raspberry Pi, all self-contained. Uh, I was having problems with the little 2-inch resistive touchscreen after doing a... Uh, uh, OS update, and uh, I just gave up and decided to get something new. So I got this 5-inch. Um, it it works. There are some drawbacks to this cable. It's a little delicate. Uh, you can get replacements on Amazon and eBay. I have not broken the other one yet, but it is kind of in place. Um, and I'll show you how this hooks up. And besides that, you have an assortment of cables. Uh, I have two empty bags here because I've already taken out the full-size HDMI cable and this USB-A to micro cable. It's a, just a longer one. You get a long and a short. And then this cable is... I think this is mini HDMI. Yes, or micro HDMI to full-size HDMI. A lot of cables. They feel like very nice cables. I will, I will tell you, say that. We'll put this back in the box. Actually, under here, because I might need to pull some of these out to show you what they are used for. Just set that like that. Alright, let's go over to the side camera. Alright, here is the screen. As you can see, there are screw holes at the top and the bottom. I have these little stand legs on them. And for some reason, they don't like to really set straight. Not a big deal. Hopefully, we can get this camera to focus. Let's go to the back. Come on, focus camera. There we go. All right, we'll just have to do this close. As you can see, there are 
dual speakers at the top. Uh, it says portable, portable display 5 inch IPS 800 by 480 at 60 hertz. Uh, so you have your dual speakers. Uh, you have a power button for turning it on. So far, uh, it has uh, been a double press to get to turn on. I haven't tried to turn it off. I just have it auto turn off. A menu button, an up button, a down button, and an exit button. You have standoffs here, and as you can clearly see, it is set up to hold a Raspberry Pi Zero or a full-size Raspberry Pi. That's what I have on my uh, other Ender 3. Over here... This small JST connector is going to be 5 volts ground, data positive, data negative. Oh, there was one more cable that came with this. Let me grab it. I knew I would forget something. It was this cable, which is a USB to that little micro JST connector. Um, I have some concern over the wiring order on this um, because what is printed on the circuit board and the colors in which they connect to this connector are not the same. Um, so I'm, I need to put a multimeter on both ends, test each of the contacts to make sure it is actually wired correctly and doesn't short something out. Just, uh, yeah, that would suck. Uh, but this is basically so you can use just a small cable uh, plug this into here and into your Raspberry Pi. Uh, this port provides power to the screen and your touch interface. This one right here, which is 5 volts, 5 volts ground, that is for that cable that had the individual leads. This one. So you can plug directly into the GPIO, I, GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi, uh, which is, I believe, no. I did do that on my other one, and then I disconnected it. Down here, you have your, if I can get it in camera shot, two small USB connectors. Uh, the top one is 5 volts. It just says 5 volts in, and this one says 5 volts plus touch. So this one you can use to power it. Basically, you can use this one, this one, this one, or this one to power this screen. Uh, and then the second one is 5 volts in as well as uh, USB for the touch data lines. Uh, so you have a, a ton of options on how to connect this. Currently on my Raspberry Pi, I just have a USB, a very short USB-A to mini connector going in, and it is powering the screen fine. Uh, I am getting a few warnings once in a while about being undervolted, but the printer hasn't locked up, nothing's failed yet, and I am not using a full strength power supply as I should on that Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, right here, let me turn it this way, you have a full size HDMI. And then right here is where that printed circuit board to HDMI cable goes in. Just lift the black little lever, slide it in, push the lever back down, you're good to go. Uh, the issue I have run into with this cable, you see it has some self adhesive on the back is that it comes out and then it has it comes about to here on a full-size raspberry pi at least uh three uh, i don't have a four or five uh and then it turns 90 degrees and plugs in right here and that puts a very sharp turn on this printed circuit board cable hasn't broken yet uh you all it also hangs out quite a bit like yay far like almost the bottom of these feet so it is, unless you're putting this in some kind of case or uh, screen holder like I did, uh, which I had to design, it it's going to be in the way. Kind of a weird design. If this had been shifted up slightly, wouldn't have been an issue, and it would hide the cables better. Unfortunately, this thing does have some cables hanging out of this side when you're using it with a Raspberry Pi. I don't have a zero, so I can't tell you any experience on that. So that is the full screen. So what we're going to do, let's go back over to this cam. We're going to go ahead and hook this up. First off, we're just going to regular, use a regular USB-A to the mini. Or, sorry, a micro. So many USB connectors does not help. My head is just full of snot and fire. And we're going to plug this into the 5 volt plus touch. 
And here it is coming up, it says Raspberry Pi. And it's immediately going to no input signal, because we have no input signal. Uh, normally, you would take your HDMI cable, plug one side into your mini PC, and the other side over to here. My setup is a little different at the moment, uh, so I can show you the actual output from here going to this screen. I have it going through an HDMI splitter and into a capture card, and I'll switch over to that in a second. So that's why the cable isn't coming direct and just kind of running off, off the... Uh, off screen, no trickery here, just convenience. We'll just plug it in. It's nice, solid feeling connectors. And of course, nothing happened because we have to turn it back on. Oh, there we go. So there we go. We, there is clipper screen. And I did not have to do any configuration to get the touch to work uh, or the screen to work on this system. Plugged it in and it just went. This is with um, Ubuntu probably version 18. It's been a while since I set this guy up. Maybe 20? Maybe 22? Really don't know. Uh, just went with the standard uh, setup. Use Kia Auth to install all the standard uh, Clipper, Moonraker, Clipper Screen, Crow's Nest, all of that. Uh, same utility and script we all know and love. And uh, it, it just works. It it works, and as you can see, it's very responsive. Let me go over to the side camera and be a little better for you. It's bright. It's clear. It responds to touch very well. Uh, it does get a bit oily on the surface. It's not like your cell phone that has a special coating to stop that, so it does have that. Then we go back, and there's... Are of our favorite controls. So, now, we're going to go over two things real quick. Let's go over to... Oop, got to scroll off screen. Nope. To there. Hopefully, <laughs> just to go back. Um... So there is not the right screen. Let me find out what is going on here. I swore I set this up before, but now I know what is going on. All right. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that confusion there. Swore I'd set that beforehand. So as you can see, uh, here is the HDMI output going into the HDMI splitter and into a capture card into my streaming system so you can see exactly what I'm pressing. Um, it, it works absolutely perfect. Let's check for an update. So far, I've been very happy with uh, both the screens. Besides the, the little bit of an issue I had on the Raspberry Pi, uh, which does not happen on the mini PC running Ubuntu. Apparently, this is localized to Raspbian. Uh, and I tried every version. Uh, Bookworm, the newest. Dusty. I, I tried three or four. I tried every 32-bit, 64-bit. Just kept going round and round in circles. And I'll go over when I go back over into... Uh, this is done checking for updates, not that it really matters, uh, what actually was happening. So, on a Raspberry Pi, when you boot this up, you're going to get your regular boot sequence. You're going to see a bunch of text going through the screen. It's going to flash a couple of times as it finds its ideal resolution. Uh, and then it goes black. And then it would turn bright white and then slowly fade away. Hey, look at that. No updates. Yay. Uh, and it took me over a week to figure out what was going on. So first off, what I'm going to say is 
let's open that one back up. Yep, there we go. That worked out. Uh, the first thing I miss is you want to actually go over to the Clipper Street Clipper instructions. Let me see if we can do this. And it and you are going to want to click on check out the hardware page for this information. Uh, let's see, was it this one? No, it is not this one. It was this one. This is the closest. This is not the exact same model. And I believe the other one was that that was the Wave Share. No, that was the 5 inch HDMI Display B. Don't need three copies open. Let's see if this is will load. Probably not. Yes. Similar, not the same. I am looking for one thing which was not at any of these. Okay. So in the setup for this one, the important part you need to pay attention to, if you are doing this on a Raspberry Pi, is this step two, modify the config.txt. Uh, what is missing from here, which I did find on a third party page, I believe it was on the actual, through the Clipper screen GitHub, uh, and through one of the actual hardware pages that, that comes off of there, uh, they recommend this. And then there was one more thing which I completely missed. I did not have to use LCD-show. I, I know that's almost all these recommend using that. I tried that. It didn't give me an advantage. Uh, it just seemed to dirty up my config. Didn't need it at all, especially with the HDMI. So let's go back over to our browser. Sorry, into I'm Roman and I am running a MOBA X term here. You can use PuTTY, whatever your favorite SSH client is. Uh, right now, let's see, bring it up so I can see. There we go. I have logged into my second printer. This is the completely self contained one. Uh, it's an Ender 3 Pro with a Raspberry Pi 3 and the same 5 inch screen. To get this screen to work on Raspbian uh, or some probably some other flavors, of Linux on the Raspberry Pi. This is what I had to do, and I believe is you'll probably have to do. Maybe different with the new book bookworm release, but I do not know. So we are going to CD into our boot directory. Do an ls. We are going to nano config.txt. We're going to scroll down. Your uh, config.txt may not look the same. It really depends on the flavor of Linux and versions of Raspbian or whatever you were writing. Uh, but we're just copy and paste uh, the stuff that was previously on the other page right into here. Most of this is not mission critical. Uh, the main one being this HDMI group, mode, drive, and CVT with 800 by 480 at 60 hertz. And I have no clue what the rest of this means. I'm sure somebody does. And it's going to tell me I'm an idiot for not, but I just don't know X Windows system that well. Uh, that's what you have to add. Now, what you also need to do is come up here to enable DRM VC4 V3D driver. And as you can see, I have commented out this one and replaced it with this one. And so that is DT overlay equals VC4 dash fkms dash v3d uh, the default is just the kms and you need to add the f at the beginning as soon as i added the f everything worked fine uh, the raspberry pi booted up you see the console it goes through its boot process on the console it flashes the screens a couple times to find its perfect resolution it went right in the clipper screen and has worked perfect since so that right there that little f is the answer now that is, once again, only on a Raspbian that I run into this. So let's exit out of there. Once you've made those changes, reboot, it should work fine. The original issue I was having was with uh, having an SPI run screen that was directly on the GPIOs, and I could not get it to work. So I thought, well, I'll just go with, with 
a screen that uses HDMI, and that should be fine. And then I had the same problems, so that was a head scratcher. Uh, but as you can see here, because I had to do it several times because I wasn't sure in Ubuntu, there is no config.txt. Did not have to do any of that. Let's go over to our home directory. All right, so we are in the root of our home directory that we set up everything under and the, the account uh, on our mini PC. And if we do an LS, we're going to have multiple folders. Let's make sure. Yep, you can still see that. So we have a data folder for each of our printers. We have four set up right now. So there's the Ender 5 data. We have X333 data. We have our X3 data right there. And we have our Ender 3 data. And it's important to know uh, which of these printers you set up first. Uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth eighth whatever um, that is kind of in the process when going to the Kia script right there is which is what we use to install all of this and it installed all the rest of that gobbledygook now the key thing to setting this up normally if you were doing this with a single printer install uh, you may or may not have a clipperscreen.conf file, and it is going to be just under the data or config file for that printer. But if you only run one, but since this is a multi instance, you notice we have multiple data folders, and it would be a pain to set up that that uh, clipperscreen.conf file, which you will need in each of those folders, and then make changes. So what you're going going to use is the printer data. That is the master for everything. If I can type. All right, and we will go into the config folder. And we cannot type. I am using the worst keyboard on the planet, is off screen. All right, so in here we have pretty much the same files you're going to find in your normal config directory under uh, main sale or fluid for running for running Clipper. Uh, this one did not have a clipperscreen.conf, uh, so I just had to go online. And if you go to, let's see here. Uh, the Clipper Stream, Clipper Screen GitHub. Do, 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 do. Thought I had set that up as well. Our network is running slow. Come on. How do we not have GitHub? There we go. Boy, my pie hole is having issues right now. So over here on the Clipper screen GitHub, there was documentation which was probably on the other screen. Yep. I believe it's under configuration. Yeah. So right in here, main options, you'll want to copy. Yeah, pretty much the main options, and I'll show you mine. There are some additional options you can set up. Of course, all these additional speeds and temps. But the main thing is you just got to have the basics. So let's go look at the basics. It is case sensitive. So we have to have our main in brackets. Invert X, Y, Z. I have not tried changing those to true. I'm pretty sure they work, but I have not tried them. Uh, job complete timeout, job error timeout, 
Auto close pop-ups equals true. Language equals English. Show cursor false. Default print printer. I set up the Ender 3 Pro first, so that is my first and default printer. Uh, use default menu. True. Use DPMS. True. And that's for turning off the screen. And then there is some auto-generated stuff that comes down here the first time you make changes in Clipper screen uh, using the actual interface. It should generate this file and it adds this stuff at the end. Not always. So I just had to copy and paste this into here and save it. Now what we need to do to make this work with multiple printers. So we want to be able to go to the screen and as you can see there is no there's no option here to to change to the individual printers. I was very confused. Thought maybe under here, no. Nothing on the side. It goes to our macros. Emergency stop, no. How do we do it? What we need to do, go back into our clipper screen conf all right and I am pausing because I only have one monitor so I'm having to do this and hide OBS we're just going to come to here give us some space and we're going to add bracket Printer Ender dash three PRO bracket. We're going to put in Moonraker underscore post colon space. Oh, got to blow my nose. Oh, that was disgusting. All right. So, moonraker underscore host 127.0.0.1. Then we're going to go moonraker underscore port colon space 7125. There is our first printer. Now, let's copy it. And we're going to paste it in again. Paste it in again. Paste it in again for as many printers as you have. So, now we need to come back and fix our names. Otherwise, I would just give you four options to control the same printer. Our second printer is Ender 5. And when you set up these the first time, the order in which you set them up in Kia, uh, that will determine your ports and which one, which printer they are assigned to. So this one is six. This one will be our old school Tronxy X3. That's seven. And this one shall be triple X3, and that is eight. I'm going to take out some of these extra spaces, just to make it a little cleaner. And that should be all we need. We're going to save it. Right. And I am going to do this. From Clipper screen directly. Click on the nope. It is a system. And no, it is not. Do 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 do. I guess we are not. No, definitely not under network. Hmm. 
Okay, we're just going to restart the service. Actually, let's go back. Yep, no option. We're just going to restart the service. Or do a full reboot. So we are going to do sudo space system ctl space restart capital K clipper screen dot service put in our password hopefully this comes up oh look at that we cannot spell moonraker fail okay I'm sure you all caught that the first time. This is what happens when you try to make changes while you are sick. Or I'm going to blame this keyboard because it is horrible. Right, save that. Restart service again. And there we go. We now have a menu that comes up. That is the four instances. Whoop, until we accidentally unplug it. See, the exact same. There is our Ender 3. Now we also get a new little icon here on the side. There's little crossing arrows. You press on that, and now it'll take you back to the main screen. Go over to the Ender 5. Looks like we need to restart it. There we go. Our Ender 5 is up. And the Tron C X3 and the X3 are off. But I know this works. I have tested it. See, as you go back... There's a little bit of a second of that loading page, but uh, there you go. So there you have it. I hope that helped you out. Now you can do one of these mini servers and have a full clipper screen interface to control multiple printers. I have four currently. Depending on the processing power that you have in that mini PC, they get better and better all the time. I'm sure you could run many, many many more printers off of one of these guys. Uh, I have not had any issues. I have had three of them printing at the same time. 200 millimeters a second. I've had no issues. So with that, I hope this helps you out. We'll catch you on the next one. Hello.